Yo, Mana Squad, if you like any of the cards you see in today's video, you can go ahead and show the channel some love with the affiliate link down below for TCG Player. TCG Player is going to have whatever it is you're looking for, and you can even search for some of your local game stores and buy from them and show them some love as well. And speaking of showing the channel love, another great way to do so is by rocking into the AM. Got the discount code on screen and down below. You can show us some love, look good in the process, and as Kennethy the Heathen loves to say, something about dripping in space and screaming. Yo! Welcome back to One More Mana. My name is Derek, and today we are not getting into another episode of the Command Center, because we are very busy prepping for Magic on Chicago. We got flights in like a day and a half at this point, trying to get everything together. Obviously, we got to practice our table flipping form. We got to do our stretches and we got to make sure we are at peak petty before Magic Con starts. So got to get all that together. But I did want to do a quick video talking about kind of one of the more difficult parts of prepping for a convention or what can be one of the more difficult parts. But before we get into the video, I did want to share some exciting news that Original Magic Art is doing another Kickstarter for playmats and prints, this time featuring the beautiful art of Mongali Villeneuve. Obviously, I'm a wee bit biased because their art for Titania is just one of my favorite things ever done. But there are some beautiful pieces of art in this. If you use the affiliate link down in the description below, you can help show the channel some love in the process. And we always do appreciate that. But let's just jump into the topic of there's a lot of things you got to do for a prep for a convention. You got to figure out, you know, clothing and, you know, deodorant and soap and toothpaste and all the normal things. But that's like for every trip, the unique thing with magic is it's like you got to bring your whole family with you because you're bringing all your decks all your little babies you got to bring with you on these trips and some people look i think i feels like i have a lot to keep track of and i think i only have like eight decks i know people that have 15 20 plus decks and i can't even imagine trying to figure out what are you going to bring spoiler alert whatever you do you could ignore everything else i say in this video which you, which you might do anyway do not bring all of them <laughs> that is just the only thing not to do it's super nerve-wracking it's dangerous if anything happens all your decks are gone it's easier for stuff to get stolen or lost if you have all your decks with you so you definitely pick a, short, a select few from my experience now of trying to go to as many conventions as i can in the last few years honestly i've never played more than i think four decks at a convention i've brought more and I think four is the most I've ever gotten through, especially for something like a Magic Con. So sometimes for like Command Fests and obviously just like a, a weekend away with friends playing Magic, maybe you get more games in, but there's so much going on at these Magic Cons. So you're going to have, you know, you have game nights live and you have meet and greets and you just have the whole like, they have like these set pieces and stuff. They have places to take pictures. You have all the artists there. You have every vendor you can imagine to buy any card you ever wanted there's a lot of things to get distracted by so in my one first piece of advice is you're gonna play way less magic than you think but what i wanted to get into is what decks i'm bringing what roster that i tend to bring to these conventions or even for weekends away with friends playing magic kind of my reasoning behind this now i don't obviously everybody has their different preferences of what they like to play but i think kind of using the, the thought process that i use of how I'm selecting decks for conventions versus, versus decks I just play might help you in the process. So for example, I'm somebody who, when I'm playing Magic, the most important thing to me is talking, catching up with my friends, being petty, talking that shit and having a great time. So I don't want to play a deck at a convention that has a whole bunch of triggers, that has a million things on the board that is a lot to keep up with and has me doing a lot of math. So a deck that I love like Flame War or you know, Minsk and Boo, or even Azuri Claw of Progress, decks that I really, really love to play that have a ton going on. Those aren't great convention decks for me. Those are decks I'm always going to play if I have a webcam game or on my LGS. Not great for a convention. I want decks that are more simple to play. Honestly, for me, a little bit less thinking that do cool and exciting things to where I can still enjoy that social process of playing more so than trying to break my brain to play more intense and a uh, I guess, well-played games of magic. I'm all for the misplays, all for doing some goofy stuff with some of my favorite decks. So kind of a two part thing for this video. If any of you will be in Chicago, come find me. And if you see one of these decks that you want to play against, you're like, Ooh, that's an easy win right there, which some of them might be. <laughs> Just let me know, point at me, yell some sort of half friendly trash talk, come get a game. Said Ken and I are going to be kind of everywhere in the command zone, trying to get as many games as possible. So definitely come find us. But the part two is if you want deck refreshes or more in-depth looks, I'm giving these little bite-sized deck techs for these. Let me know in the comments below and I can definitely do some follow-up videos for anybody not in Chicago that does want to see these and get an in-depth look. Just let me know. I'd be happy to break them down. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is my Pashalik Mons deck. This 
this deck to quote the great poet birdman um you start with straight shots and then pop goblins you flirt with some hood rats and then pop goblins because the whole deck is about popping goblins but yeah this deck is super straightforward you're basically just trying to pop your own goblins uh Patch League mons does a great job of dealing damage and serving as a sack outlet so i really wanted to lean full into that no overrun effects in this deck there's not like a coat of arms or a shared animosity we're not interested in any of that we want Patch League mons to deal damage we want vicious shadows to deal damage if half heart is an amazing card in here because when things get blocked and pop pop they're dealing like four damage to creatures that's what this whole deck is about is that non-combat damage that goblins can deal stuff like goblin grenade to me it's just super on flavor and it feels like the most flavorful goblin deck i can come up with and obviously speaking of flavor you got to throw mons goblin raiders in there as well it's a really fun deck and for me i've experienced this deck can play at a wide variety of tables it doesn't win a ton it's not as it it, it it can be explosive but it needs so much setup that i've rarely seen it just have that turn to go off so if you're playing against weaker tables i've played it against pre-con level decks it doesn't do too much and against stronger decks at least you're pinging damage so you can remove some meaningful threats to feel like you're involved in the game which is nice but it is a super fun deck and if you ever want to play against goblins without the imminent fear of death this is a fun deck to play against. The second deck I'm bringing with me is my Halloween Hogak deck. This is probably by a wide margin my most flavorful deck. Everything about this deck, the flavor matters. And from the deck stats to the card choices to everything, this deck is all about my favorite time of year. It's spooky season. It's Halloween year round. And that's what this deck represents. It's one that I don't really ever remember this deck winning, if I'm being completely honest. Not in a very, very long time, but it always makes me happy when I play it. It always does something and makes the game, it makes it feel like you're somewhat involved, but not in a way that's like doing too much. Similar to Patch Like Mons, and it's why I love playing these decks, because I feel involved without ever kind of just bleh, and having to track a whole bunch of stuff and doing too much and getting a headache. So this Hogak deck, when I talk about how flavorful it is, even to the numbers, so I try to use the numbers six and 13 as much as possible in all the deck stats for this, because obviously the spooky numbers with all the sixes and, and you know, six, 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 13, all that, I need that as much as possible in the deck to be as spooky as possible. So we got 33 creatures because three plus three is six. Hear me out. Instance, enchantments and artifacts, all six. Then sorceries, we have 13 sorceries and basic lands. We run 13 basic lands. So the numbers in every category are represented by this. And I, it, it goes deeper than that. Obviously, we got to run the card All Hallows Eve because it's Halloween, All Hallows Eve, living death. Basically, every card in the deck has some sort of spooky art, eerie art, and, and really just embodies what I feel like the spookiest part of magic. What, what could be spookier than an actual living necropolis going out of the ground and then even from like flavor purposes hogak was like one of the bigger modern boogeymen of all time so it's just got layers and layers of it i love it so much this deck was also an excuse for me to throw every mulch effect ever printed <laughs> into a single deck i don't have a great explanation but mulch is one of my favorite cards ever printed i love it so anything that is a mulch like effect where you're just playing it milling some getting a land to hand milling some getting a creature to hand those just make me happy to cast so i stuff them <laughs> all into this deck the whole deck is just milling yourself and playing out Hogak, swinging at people, maybe sacking it for some value, bringing Hogak back and swinging some more. Back in the day, I used to have more like win cons and stuff where there was like a crater hoof or an overrun or a triumph of the hordes. But every time I cast those, I was sad because then the, it just felt like it was like a Hogak didn't do it. It was some other card. So I wanted to keep it on flavor. Really the only... <laughs> like the only direct win con in this deck is the draw lord of extinction sort of combo where if you have lord of extinction out graveyards are huge, huge you can draw to drain everyone um but yeah that's probably the only way i've seen this deck win otherwise it's just swinging with hogak but it is a, it's a super fun deck if you do want to play what i love about this is i can break this out against pre-cons against newer players against those like flavor art based decks and it's not going to do too much i think the scariest thing this will ever do is like a hogak turn three which is oh you got an eight eight and then all of a sudden everybody starts doing like impactful things and that eight, the eight eight doesn't feel so good anymore so it's a great deck if you want to if y'all got some spooky decks out there let me know and we can get some halloween mono -y mono going on now the next deck i'm bringing is a deck that I had for a while, put back together recently, and I've kind of fallen back in love with, and it's Vadrock Apex of Thunder. This is the Mutate Jeskai Commander, where you're kind of like snapcastering basically three mana value or less non-creature spells from your graveyard. It's a super fun deck. There's a lot, of, I've seen storm builds, I've seen some combo builds. This is not a combo build, this is more of like a value build, but it's really, I love this deck because it contains my three favorite commanders ever in Jeskai, all in one deck, but still doing what each of them love. 
So it's got the Geist of St. Traft, the Locust God, and Talrand all in one shell. And all, it, it, despite the fact they all do such different things, this commander uniquely cares about all three. And it is such a fun deck to play. You have a mix of Spell Slinger with some Voltron aspects. And also, oh yeah, let's just do some value stuff from the graveyard. I, this deck wheels a bunch. It refills everybody's hands. Everybody's drawing cards a lot of the time. If that's the kind of the vibe of the table, which is great. It always feels like people are involved. And I've picked some of my favorite win cons for the deck. This deck evolves over time because one of the most interesting thing is when you mutate and get to recast things from your graveyard, it doesn't exile it. You can cast things over and over. So it's all about finding fun spells to want to recast. One, I guess fun is relative, but one card I love is Tasha's Hideous Laughter because it falls into that category. And the best part about this is if you're playing against real casual stompy decks, 20 mana values like three cards is not going to do anything. But the hyper efficient, hyper focused deck at the table that has a bunch of like one and two mana, zero mana rocks, all that, they're going to exile a whole bunch. So I do love that it mostly disproportionately affects players with like kind of like spikier decks, which is really, really cool. By far my favorite card in this deck and really the whole reason i love to play this is the card inevitable betrayal vadrock uniquely works super cool with anything with suspend because you can just cast it out of your graveyard for free because the mana value is zero which is amazing and inevitable betrayal is my favorite example of this it's essentially just you pick a creature out of one of your opponent's decks bam and it's created such fun board states one of the things i love is because that's really my best win con in this deck it really keeps the deck in check because i'm playing my opponent's best cards and it keeps like a power level balance but one of my favorite things to do is whatever board state i get trying to find a win con in an opponent's deck i've done it before i've gotten a psychosis crawler from an opponent was able to like wheel a bunch of times and kill everyone like that or you know if someone's playing like a blight steel just go take their blight steel bam hit them with it let them know what they're doing to you also the other thing for this deck I'm a huge fan. Those old, this is a whole aside I might have talked about. Old Godzilla movies are kind of my thing. I love them. Those like people in suits swinging on wires, fighting each other, just wonderful. And R Rodan, the Rodan version of Vadrock is my favorite version of it. It is a, a great card. If y'all haven't seen the like 1950s, 60s Godzilla movies, pause the video, go watch them, and you will thank me later. And then the last kind of like regular deck category or the deck I want to talk about here is the Scarab God. This one is no surprise. This is a deck I've talked about how I love for years and years at this point. It's pretty basic. To be honest, as unique as I feel like my Vadrock list and my Hogak list might be, this one's not too unique. It's it's the Scarab God zombies and fun. It's just so many of my favorite Demir cards fit into this shell. I have when I my first pre-release ever was Hour of Devastation. That was when I first got in. And I remember seeing someone open an invocation and seeing that and being like, I just want one so bad. It's an Egyptian God card from Yu-Gi-Oh. This is the greatest thing ever. I just want it. And so for years later to finally, it took, you know, years down the line, I ended up actually getting one of the invocation Scarab Gods. It's grown into one of my favorite decks. It's pretty basic. It's not very strong. I'm got some mill effects, got some zombies. I'm trying to take my opponent's best creatures out of the graveyard. This is again, another attrition based deck where if it lasts till the late game, it can do some powerful stuff, but it's really never gonna run out and sprint out and get unbearable before turn five, six, seven, eight. It's, it's gonna take its time to get there, which is kind of that range that I like. And that's really the, the common thread that I found with these decks. I found a lot that I love to play at conventions is none of these are racing to, to kill people. These are all about taking kind of the scenic route, playing some of the cards that make me the happiest that I have stories behind. And it just makes for a really good social experience. Now, having said all that, so I talk about kind of bringing your favorite decks to the table. One thing that I also plan, so if you're, it, it works both ways. If you're someone who plays more competitive, you have a lot of really cutthroat decks and all four of your decks are bam, bam, bam. I would say bring a fifth that is either a pre-con or pre-con adjacent so you can play against different pods. And I'm kind of doing the same in the opposite direction where I'm also bringing my Titania deck, which is a lot. That deck is the opposite of everything I just said here. You let that thing go unchecked by turn four or five and the whole table might be dead. That thing is constantly, no matter how much I power it down, it is always doing too much. You're constantly getting elementals. There's a Gaia's Cradle in there. There's a Crater Hoof in there. There is just a lot of stuff going on. So it's not a deck I anticipate playing much, but it does represent, if I sit down at a table, shout out to Joe Johnson, play very scary decks. I'm not going to pull out Hogak. I, I'm not going to have a good time if I pull out, pull out a Hogak against him. Or if I'm sitting down with someone, a, you know, a fan or something that has, look, I, I only have high level decks. Nobody's going to have fun if I'm playing Vadrock against the CDH adjacent deck. So having that one deck to kind of go outside of your comfort zone is always a good idea. So that is my full roster for Chicago. Like I said, if you're going to be there, let me know what decks you want to see if you're trying to get games in with any of them. And if you're not, 
Let me know if you want to see more in-depth deck techs about these, kind of about deeper into the builds, what the win cons are, kind of the evolution of these decks over time. I would love to get into it. But again, if you're going to be there, make sure you hit us up Twitter, in the comments here, wherever you want. We'll try to make ourselves very easy to find. Um, typically, if you see a table fly and cards go in different directions, people running away from event security, it's probably us. So if, if that's not enough, just DM us and, and we'll come find you. But can't wait to meet, meet some of y'all out there. Um, and we'll have some command centers coming back very soon. But until then, I'll see y'all next time.